Good morning, Eric Waller. Hey, how are you? Well, I am uh, playing hurt. I'm sick this morning, and this weekend may finally have been too much for me. Would you like to take that one on for me? That uh, it's Obama's fault. Oh, the Crimea. That, yes, uh, Russia invaded well, Crimea. What, yeah, I mean, everything becomes this fog of unknowability um, with Trump, which is the Kremlin playbook. But people, I, I'm look, you know, there was talk last week about all this news fatigue, and, and people are tuning out, and I totally get that. And but, I mean, this Crimea thing is a perfect example. I mean, it's confusing, and I don't think most people follow it. I mean, casual news consumers. Right. But Putin annexed, took Crimea, and was kicked out of the G8. That's yes. how the G8 became the G Summit. Right. Because people were so shocked and appalled, and there were sanctions, and it was a really big deal. And Trump comes out on Friday, and he says, why is the G7 not the G8? Yeah. We should, uh, we should have Russia back in. And then... You know, I guess a couple of people mentioned, well, you know, I think Crimea was the reason they got kicked out. And he, the spin is that, what did he say? He let it get away. Or yes. Something. Is that how he phrase it? Whoop. Y- yes, and while apparently. He, while he was sleeping, Crimea slipped away to, into the hands of the Kremlin. Oh, and also he's uh, Putin's worst nightmare. And Putin really wanted Hillary to win. You heard that well, one this week. Oh. Well, look, but I think yeah. the larger important picture that I think people do understand, that virtually everything Trump does not, you know, you can certainly make an argument for a lot of domestic stuff, but literally everything Trump does on the international front uh, is to benefit Putin uh, and, and to try, A, to try to get Putin back into the G8 and or at the same time just basically blow up every American longstanding um, relationship with Germany, with Great Britain, with Canada. I mean, this is a joke. And, you know, as Paul Krugman, you know, pointed out over the weekend, what's so important to understand in, is that all these crises that Trump is creating are for non-existent issues. Yeah. I mean, these are things, you know, the, the flood of immigration, well, it's down, is it a 40-year low? This trade war, even Republicans, uh, I mean, they're doing it in their cowardly, muted way, but yeah. it's hard to find any other, quote-unquote, policy issue the Republicans have pushed back on because, obviously, tariffs have not been a Republican uh, policy initiative for half a century, but they understand it is going to hit the red states the hardest. So even they are just completely bewildered, and nobody, nobody can explain why he's doing it other than to blow up U.S. relations with our closest ally. Well, right. I mean, I, I how much more, like as I said earlier, Eric, does the in the open, does the treason have to be? You wrote a piece, Republicans blast Trump for siding with Russia against our allies. But, you know, even using the word blast, it's like, well, sure, they say something like John McCain or I, I guess you quoted uh, Ben Sass, but they're not going to do anything. Right? right. And it's the same, you know, it, it's basically the same guys over and over. Uh, yeah. And I say guys because there's one Republican leader in all of the, right. <laughs> the Republican Congress. So it's the same guys over and over. Everyone else is scared to death. And it's just astonishing to watch, you know, what Trump did in Quebec over the weekend. Uh, clearly did not have the guts to, to confront anyone about trade. So they paper over this final communique, this final statement, and then he gets on a plane and concocts this cover story that he was offended by Justin Trudeau. Yeah. Uh, I mean, he's such a coward. It's just unbelievable. But, yeah. you know, I understand these leaders, they're, they're in a tricky position because the U.S. is so powerful. And, and you say, okay, we're going to stand up to him on trade. But then there are 20 other issues they have to deal with the U.S., but everyone is trying to coddle him, whether it's the media, whether it's the Republican Party, whether it's international leaders. And at some point, people, you know, the emperor has no clothes. And yeah. we are just begging for people in influential positions of power to say so in public, because that, that's what it's going to well, take. Well, thank you. You tweeted it's way past time for powerful players on the international and domestic front, including media, to speak plainly. Modus, POTUS is mentally unstable and poses a grave threat, period. Um, and, and I feel like this weekend put it in such stark relief, didn't it? I mean, yes, I, I did. and you you said it, you as you do, Eric, you often speak for me. You tweeted, there are two mm-hmm. uh, uh, pressing storylines about Trump that should dominate coverage every day. He is a pathological liar and likely mentally unstable. Uh, incredibly, the D.C. press dances around both. Um, both. That, uh, yeah. Not just one, but both. And, and you know, Jay Rosen, uh, NYU journalism professor had a great tweet over the weekend and he he was pointing out you know uh the disdain for science the attack on the press you know uh, waging war with our allies 
all these things uh, are, are, are part of a bigger, frightening picture. And, but the press treats them all as these isolated incidents. And, and I, my point was, you know, the press is so afraid of connecting these dots because when you connect these dots, yeah. the, the picture that emerges, as we all know what it is, uh, I mean, this is just undemocratic, authoritarian, radical. Now they're, you know, we're learning more and more about this, this insane immigration policy. There was a piece over the weekend. Right, and, uh, and yet it's, it's hard to even describe. They're putting them in cages. Parents are told, "Oh, we're going to take your kids and clean them up." Yeah, for a bath. Don't come back. Eric, I but mean, here, but that, that goes to your first point. They've got to cover every story from the point of view that Trump is a pathological liar and he lies about everything. everything. So there he is again this week and go, oh, it's a horrible Democrat policy. I like to stop it. I mean, it is a complete outright lie. And they don't state that every time they use the stupid soundbite. I mean, even the fact that, you know, he took questions and nobody asked questions about any of this stuff, uh, right? It's, it's bad. It's bad. And, and you know, the Canada thing, we kind of laugh and we kind of yeah. say, oh, my God, he's picking a fight with Canada. Yeah, we're in but South I, Park. He literally is blaming Canada. Right. But I guarantee, you know, the, the same, you know, blind followers on Fox News, even though there was, a, you know, within the last year, there's polling, you know, what do people think of America, uh, of Canada? You know, 97 percent, you know, some in, 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 off the chart number of people, uh, you know, love and respect Canada. And I guarantee you, if we take a poll at the end of this week, uh, you know, Republicans, it'll, you know, it'll just go through the floor because they'll believe him because it sounds vaguely plausible that they're that they're killing our dairy farmers with 500 percent terror for whatever number he makes up yeah and and so i see headlines you know trump says trudeau uh you know or trump says canada is harming uh, farmers and things like that and it's not until the eighth or tenth paragraph you find out oh he just made up this thing he admitted that, that he made it up eight, right last time had- he talked to trudeau he goes look i didn't know i just said yeah, yeah. Uh, you know we have a. Uh, in fact, we have a surplus. I mean, it's just eight billion. Yeah, eight billion. Not a yeah. small surplus. An eight billion dollar uh, trade and service surplus. But that's that's what I mean, Eric. Is how do you? How, uh, this is what I keep saying. How do you report when everything he says? Everything. I mean, this whole this is a Democrat policy. I'd like to, if they give me money for the wall, I, I'd be happy to stop this Democrat policy. First of all, it's not, he said it's a Democrat bill. First of all, it's not a bill. It is a, exclusively a Trump administration policy that right. he just made up. And, and as you always say about the emperor having no clothes, you know, he's good at tearing things down. He doesn't know how to negotiate anything. He has, right, torn down the Iran deal, torn down right. the climate deal, torn down, the, uh, uh, you know, uh, TPP, t- you name it, right? Th- this... Uh, like I say, the the dreamers. He he does not. He thinks that he's this great negotiator, and he's going to get these right. better deals. He's done nothing on any of it, Eric. And why isn't that more widely reported? Yeah, and even the Wall Street Journal editorial page, you know, the right wing uh, editorial page said uh, says today, you know, if Trump has some grand strategy on trade, it's not apparent to anyone. Uh, right. Which which goes to your point. Uh, you know, he he. I guess he sees himself as this great disruptor, right? He's going to rip up DACA. He's going to rip up the Iran deal. He's going to he's going to rip up the G the G7 summit as we know it. I mean, uh, and it has you know again, Eric. We can you know, there's so many like sort of a, a, a dark humor, but you go like I, you're hearing all these stories already. A dreamer that was deported, yeah. that was killed by a gang. You know, a father who had That's his right. three year old ripped away from him, who killed himself. Like That's I. Right. The, the, it, this, these policies are just unimaginably cruel. Yeah, it, we are getting beyond the, you know, maybe part of the first year it was kind of this uh, philosophical debate about what are the impacts going to be. Uh, and, you know, I, I, in terms of the politics, you know, it, I think it's going to be very interesting. I think Trump thinks immigration is a home run. I think Republicans think immigration is a home run. The, the tax bill has become a fiasco. They need something else to run on. And I think they feel like immigration is great. We're going to, you know, the brown people, we're going to attack Mexicans. This is going to be great. I don't think they're prepared for uh, the, this, this narrative that has, has been unfolding. And I don't think they're prepared for ads about ripping families apart. And because this policy is so inhumane that politically, uh, I think they thought this was going to be a home run. We're going to run scare tactics. We're going to run about, you know, 
Democrats coddling uh, criminals yeah. and things like that. I don't think they're ready, and I don't. I haven't seen any Republican on TV who has been able to explain. You know, we're going to take your kids away, and yeah. so it, it, I, I think they've stumbled into an area that they're not ready for. This is, setting aside, it's completely inhumane. Yeah. Setting aside, it's horrific. This is such a, an important time for the media, Eric, as you always talk about so eloquently. But, you know, these three tweets, you said, so no, the GOP is not the only hugely influential D.C. institution that refuses to deal with Trump honestly. Same goes for the timid media. You said, and by the way, when Dowd won a Pulitzer for slut-shaming Lewinsky, the D.C. press cheered wildly. Dowd wasn't alone in D.C. media when it came to shaming mocking Lewinsky back then. But they flushed all that down the memory hole because it ruins the press narrative of it's Clinton who hasn't learned anything. I mean, the fact that we're still talking about a 20-year-old BJ instead of the the uh, fact that the Obama or the, what, the Trump administration is trying to rip away protection for people with pre-existing conditions. <laughs> Excuse me, and I have one. And starting World War III is is not more pressing, right? No, no, but Marine Dowd will never pass up an opportunity to write about Bill Clinton and, and, and um, lecture him. But as I, I, as I was pointing out over the weekend, I mean, there was a big debate last weekend, you know, Bill, Bill Clinton doesn't get me too, you know, he, he, he doesn't know how to talk about it, he, he didn't, he's never apologized, which he has. Um, and it turns out is um, Maureen Dowd won a Pulitzer uh, for slut-shaming Monica Lewinsky for a living. She did it for many years. And as I as you mentioned those tweets, D.C. Press thought it was hysterical. They loved it once she won a Pulitzer. My point is there's been a cultural shift, uh, and, and, and times have changed, and that was the attack on Bill Clinton last week. But, oh, the pundits, the media, they're immune to all of this. Yeah. They were guilty from, uh, of some astonishingly bad behavior right. in terms of how they oh, portrayed Monica yeah. Lewinsky, and now they're lecturing and Eric, people well, yes. about this. I'm and, sorry, I, I can't. I just can't. And we're in literally the fight for our lives, literally our lives exactly. and our democracy. And, that's, that's, and, and this and this is how we got here. Is this obsession right. with the with the Clintons, right? And 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 the other Maureen Dow point. You know, I, I joke on Twitter. I think she wrote 147 uh, columns about the Mark Rich pardon, the single bad pardon that right. you know that got Bill Clinton in trouble. She hasn't, she hasn't typed one sentence about Donald Trump, who, who's now going to use pardons to, A, he doesn't, he doesn't know Muhammad Ali doesn't need a pardon. Oh, my God. I guess he figured, you know, the most famous black athlete in America, yeah. uh, you know, needs his pardon because he has problems with the law. Um, and, and basically, obviously, he's, he he's obviously just going to use... doesn't consult anyone about Nobody. anything. That was d down the list of dumbest things he said this weekend. I'm thinking about Muhammad Ali. It's like, oh, my God. Really? Doesn't know how to Google. Doesn't know how to do anything. But more importantly, you know, he's obviously going to use, the, you know, the, certainly the suspicion he's going to use these pardons to, as a firewall for his criminal enterprise. Yeah. Uh, and all the people who lectured us about how immoral Bill Clinton was on a single pardon um, suddenly can't find the courage to to uh, take on Trump. Yep. So it, it, yep. it's, a big, it's a huge problem. Yep, we're screwed. Thank you, Eric. See you next week. <laughs> all right, see you Bye -bye. next week. Thank you, Eric.